How about now? <clears throat> nope. You still can't hear me? Not really. Like, like you come in a little bit and then it fades back out. Mm -hmm. I think it's on your end, to be honest with you. What? Maybe it's on Skype's end, I don't know. Maybe? Why are we doing so? Oh. I was gonna say do this. That's not Because it should be, it should be fine. I haven't changed anything. <clears throat> like, you could hear me before, right? Oh, I can hear you. Okay. Now it's good. Okay, That's cool. Good. This is gonna be weird. Just waiting on two people, and we'll be good to go. If I don't know any of them, they're not real ranked stars. Say again? And if I don't know any of them, there's a problem. <clears throat> you might know some of the antics guys. You, I don't know any of the... Um, of the barbershop players, so... Hmm. But they've got like, it's like, Antics is like Massacre, Alcro, Fleer, time, <coughs> Times... I'd have seen him in Ranked once or twice before. I've seen Fleer. Yeah. He was on Barbershop. Uh, Chef D. Curry, Rundown oh, Pants. Oh, Chef Curry? Yeah. I know Curry. Uh, Ryan C. Nap. I know Ryan. Yep. So. Okay, so I know. I know. Myself. Got a couple names in here, so now everyone's everyone's in now. I just open up this email so I make sure the maps are correct. <laughs> <coughs> All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna start actually talking here. A couple yeah. seconds. Once it hits, in once it hits 7:55, and you let me know that the uh, yeah, and once you let me know that the stream is up and working. Okay. Well, if there's a three minute delay, it's gonna. It'll you'll be able to see it in 20 seconds. Oh wait, hold on, I gotta share my screen with you so you can actually see what's going on. No, I can't. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I saw my face. Okay. Okay, stream's up. Okay, good, 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 good. <clears throat> Let's just uh, give it a couple more minutes to for people to start coming <clears throat> trickling in. Trickling in. Yeah, and one guy just left the game anyway, so we gotta wait for him. Motorhead Whorehouse Blues. That's yeah, that's a really good song. <laughs> Let's see what's going on with these guys while they got while they got left. Well, we come up from the gutter, the run side of the tracks. Here we come up from the gutter, the run side of the tracks. You know the music brought us our bait, and we ain't never been back. I like Antic's logo, it's pretty cool. 
Yeah, it's like a jester. Mm-hmm. Alright, it seems like we have one player who's having some technical difficulties at the moment, but hopefully they'll get sorted out soon. <coughs> Welcome, everybody, to the uh, R6 TV League broadcast of Antics versus Barbershop, and then later tonight we have uh, Final Concept versus Off Brand, and uh, the games will get started here in just a couple of minutes. So tonight, during this cast, you have me, Rams, main uh, main commentator, and then we have a special guest co-caster tonight. My friend, my teammate, the one and only Goddess. Nice intro. Some guys. So, Goddess, you want to introduce yourself a little <laughs> bit more, tell the chat a little bit more about yourself, or maybe something you want to mention or talk about? What do I want to talk about? Well, I was a sub for Lethal Gaming, so I had to put up with Rams quite a bit last season. It was it was pretty entertaining. <sighs> I'm sure it I've wasn't never, that I've bad. I've never casted before. So it'll be it'll be interesting. It it was kind of bad, not just you, but like the the team as a whole. I was a bit of the the guinea pig. Well, you definitely came in clutch when we needed you to. So all of us are greatly appreciative of that. Now, <laughs> you have made the transition over to PC, and you've started playing competitively over there, Correct. and. I was just wondering if you could enlighten some of the viewers who have not played on PC or and maybe are thinking about switching over to PC from console, whether it's mm -hmm. PS4 or Xbox, what are some of the difficult things that, uh, the difficult things about the change or what are some of the easy things about the change or things that, you know, changed or things that you noticed you thought would be harder and might like have been easier. With? Right, yeah. Well, like, when I first switched, a lot of people were sitting there saying that the biggest thing I would have a problem with would be, like, my aim. Mm -hmm. But for me, like, the mouse, I was I was fine with. I My aim was fine. I could hit shots. I could snap to people. But my left hand, when it came to the keyboard, I still kind of fumble with some of the keys. Right. Like, sometimes I'll go to, like, knife a window, and I'll accidentally lay down instead. So, mm -hmm. for me, it was just it was getting my left hand used to pressing all these different buttons at the same time. Right, and do you have any special keybinds that you have set up, or have you changed anything from the standard way of the way the keyboard and mouse are set up? Well, like a lot of the people that I talk to, like a lot of people switch their lean buttons, like from Q and E, like they'll put it on some, like on their mouse or something. Mm -hmm. For me, I left those and I left my knife at V, which is kind of weird. But then I put like one of my sketch, like my my gadget, I put that on my mouse. I put crouch on my mouse. Like on PC, you see a lot of people drop shot, but I crouch shot instead. I feel like that benefits me more. So there's two different shotting. buttons for one for laying down and one for crouching? Yep. I have crouch in my mouse and I have laying down still on my keyboard. Okay. Well, right now, everybody, we're having a bit of technical difficulties. Team Antics has informed me that they will be bringing in a sub if they cannot get their typical fifth member in. Now... Uh, looking at some of these players, some of the people in the chat, or, and you or I might know some of these players. Um, I, I know, know a lot Antics of the better. Is... Yeah, I know. I know Antics better than uh, I know the Barbershop, but Barbershop does have some players that I do know, and one of them being Chef Curry and uh, Ryan Cnap who I've played and ranked multiple times, and then it comes down to antics. And I've known Massacre for a long time. I've known Fleer. And uh, their fifth uh, times has been a buddy of mine since PS4 days, but he's, he's the one that's having some technical difficulties. I'm hoping that they can get their, uh, their stuff sorted out. And then as soon as they're in, we're going to get started here, guys. Sorry for the late start. Here we go. Now he's in. And... First map is consulate, and I'm gonna start it up. Ball rolling. Yep, just getting the ball rolling. 
And uh, I'm excited. I know a lot of these boys. I want to see how they play. Yeah, I want to. I definitely want to see what Antics can put together, specifically because we saw them play Coastline actually in the last match they played, and they played them. They played that map very well. They def. It, they played against Simple, if I'm remembering correctly, and they had some. Uh, they had superior map knowledge on Coastline, and on, even even though you might think like, oh well, Coastline is a new map, and everyone's played on it at, at least by now and should know all the stuff. Well, Antics definitely had some strategies and some interesting spots that they were using to get some kills early and get the bomb planted. So maybe we'll see something that I've never seen before out of one of these teams. <clears throat> it's looking like uh, Antics though is going to go Garage first which is typically done to throw off the offensive team. Just maybe they're not prepared, didn't bring the right might, operators. Not a Havana. Right, but they, but they predicted correctly, and it looks like they brought a Thermite instead of a Hibana, so... Hibana like, still would have been useful for those hatches. Yeah, Hibana definitely would have been useful, but they brought a Blackbeard and a Glaz, and we'll see how they utilize their utility to try to figure out exactly how to get this plan off and where their push is going to originate and go through. I don't see a mirror though. The mirror's been used a lot. Yeah, where would you where would you where do you think the best place for a mirror <clears throat> is like do you think that it's good to put it on the the big garage or do you think that it's better to just have them in the back and kind of peek when they try to come plant? Personally, I'd put it at the back, like in the, the security room in the back hallway. I would put a mirror in there and have somebody with an Acon plane. Then it's really easy to peek out and just like pick somebody off from them. Right, exactly. The mirrors on the garage wall, I feel like they're just a waste. Well, seems like we have four of the attackers spawning outside of police line, and they're very cautious to push up, at least on the right side, because there's typical spawn kill spots coming from there. Blackbeard looks like he's trying to push in through the front door along with Sledge and uh, Ash, and Jaeger right now, though, is inside of the bathroom. Does Blackbeard know he's there? The oh, it's castled off to his left, so he's actually relatively safe, but Ash looks like she's going to just try to repel up here, open the window, and Ash the floor to try to get rid of Bandit. But now she's given her position. To, uh, Jaeger's given his position away. They know he's there. They have to be. They have to watch out for him. Ash is still repelled, and Ash is now going to open up the floor and try to hold the spot. But it seems like Castle has picked someone off from the front door, and it, seems, it was Blackbeard. They know that he's there. They've droned him out, and it's like a heavy upstairs hold coming out. Sledge holding an angle here, getting in a gunfight with Castle. Castle barely living. Maybe Sledge could have got him there, but Sledge is still holding a hard angle here. Ash now in though, in the bathroom, taking control. <clears throat> does she know the hatch is open or does is it closed? They know that there's more than one of these guys up here. They know Jaeger's there and now it looks like Times is lagged out, unfortunately. And <clears throat> Glass is taken out by Frost on the staircase. Ash holding an angle knows that Frost is there and Castle is still shooting out the front door. Possibly Sledge is still trying to peek him here. Yes, I think I think that's what's going on here. Now it looks like Ash is gonna open this castle and gets her Ash charge Jaegerd. Peeks onto Frost, doesn't quite get the kill, but then is down she is down by Thermite with a wall bang, but they don't know she's down. Bandit or smoke might be able to pick her up, but I think they're just gonna leave her for dead. And now Thermite should rotate back around to the front of the garage to try to open it up, but it doesn't look like he's quite in position to do so. He's more interested in watching Ash's back, which is which is smart, but at the same time, they're kind of wait. They're kind of wasting time. And even though Frost is down, that Roamer has definitely done her job by staying there. And they don't know that she's down, and that's the whole reason that they're slow to push this. But it looks like Thermite has come back around and will start to open up the garage, while Frost eventually does fall to the damage over time. Ash watching the garage stairs, trying to just make sure that everything's safe. Bandit hiding behind White Van, typical spot. Let's see where Smoke's hiding. Smoke is behind the pipes, two typical spots that these defenders are holding. Castle is still upstairs and has to rotate around. Maybe he can come around for a flank, but we don't know where that flank is going to come in, but it looks like he's just trying to come back to the OBJ and hold an angle here. Now Ash throwing smokes, but as the smokes are being thrown, Bandit peeks and kills Thermite. Now the diffuser is down. Ash has to come through the barbed wire. Smoke hears her, picks her off, and now it is all up to Sledge, who is coming down the garage stairs exactly where Ash was. Smoke knows he's there. He throws a grenade trying to pick up a kill, but it's too late. There's no way they can win this round now. The defense antics takes first round. They hesitated. They took too long to open that big garage wall. 
Yeah, but they, they just didn't know that Frost was down. If they had known Frost was down, they would have definitely gotten there quickly. And we're probably going to have to do a rehost here, guys, just because, yep, we're going to do a rehost here, unfortunately. But the first round goes to Antics. <clears throat> and I think that Antics will most likely be going for a substitute if this, because uh, this problem cannot persist. What else did you notice about the... <clears throat> the that that the, upstairs yeah, that hold... That upstairs hold was nice. They didn't like. I could tell that the offense was like immediately thrown off because they didn't. I don't think they really expected that many like players to actually play upstairs. Right. Exactly. You had what? Fro you had Frost, Jaeger, and Castle all three playing up top. And I don't think Ash ever realized that there was actually a rotation hole in the bathroom. Yeah, because she ran in there and looked, but I don't think she act. You're mm -hmm. right. I don't think she actually. If she would have gone through that rotation hole, she maybe could have picked off Frost a little bit sooner. Yeah, and if she had actually picked off Frost, they would have known, okay, Frost isn't going to come for the flank, Thermite wouldn't have had to come inside, and they could have opened the garage mm -hmm. quicker, which was <clears throat> definitely what held them up, but didn't necessarily win the round for the defense. So we're just going to see how it progresses from here, and if the offense, if they have to attack there again, can, uh, can adapt to how the defense mm -hmm. was playing there. Now, we were talking earlier about, about mirror placement and stuff. So... I personally am against putting Miras on walls that the offense is trying to Thermite or trying to Hibana. I feel like it gives just a free line of sight to the offense once they open it without actually preventing them from doing anything. What Do you feel the same way, or do you think it kind of can go both ways here and there? I feel like it I feel like it depends like on the map. So like I know house house isn't in like the like the the map pool. Right. But what a lot of players have been doing, like they put both mirrors on like the left wall while mm -hmm. Thermite would like usually go for the right one. But if mm -hmm. the mirror plays that wall smart, she can keep Thermite from coming to that side at all. And then Bandit is free to like Bandit trick that entire like that entire wall. Exactly. For me, That's, yeah, it depends exactly. on the map. Yeah, on, it, it definitely depends on the map. On Consulate, I feel like putting mirrors on that big wall is just a waste. Like it's it's not really going to do much unless you have somebody playing that. But like if they did what they did on this this push and Ash just open that top floor, the person playing that wall would be pushed back and those mirrors would just be rendered useless. Right, and then they they can open them from above and have free lines of sight to just kind yep. of look in while still being covered by a majority of the reinforcement that isn't open. So And especially if you have glass sitting out there or a blackbeard, that that's an OP play for the offense. Exactly. <laughs> so we'll see if any of the if either of these teams employ you know, any Mira tactics. I don't suspect we'll see any Miras up top, but we have all the players back in now, and we're going to start this back up. So, I don't think that they're going to play any Miras up top. I don't think Miras up top on this map are particularly useful. Maybe someone somewhere has figured out one spot that it's really useful, but, you know, we'll yeah, see. Yeah, I'm we'll trying to exactly think of like where you would put one. Unless somebody would like play that like that main hallway up top and then like kind of watch a windows, I can kind of see that. But you're also still like in a line of sight from like spiral staircase, and that's still a yeah. Problem. And even and if they were to take over spiral staircase, now there's a mirror that's on the back that the offense can mm -hmm. see of someone playing inside of a bomb, or like they can get an angle into couch room from there. That's awkward and not unexpected. So right here we have uh, do have a mirror. Yeah, they do have a mirror going up top, which is. I wonder. I wonder if yeah. they're gonna hold admin and have mirror play in that, like that little kitchen area. She can see both those windows if she places the mirror in the right spot. Exactly, but then that is very dependent on mm -hmm. whether or not the attack comes from that side, and mm -hmm. the attack from that side can only work so many times before the defense literally just pushes everything over here and covers it, but it, I think Mira is actually probably going to be playing one. I don't she's think she'll put one on the admin. stairs. Yeah, she's definitely she's putting one on the staircase and is going to be playing in admin. So... Yeah, she already opened it too, which I think could have been delayed just to give the offense just because if the offense drones it out now, they're going to see, hey, there is a Mira here and it is open. So... We'll see exactly where she ends up playing and where she places her second Mira. Now the offense has taken a Fuse and a, and a Montane, which I like. I think that that's a good option here. We have them all spawning garage side. And they're just 
cautiously pushing up like before, very wary of spawn kills, but it doesn't look like the defense is actually looking for any spawn kills in any sort. And Valkyrie right now is roaming. She's going to roam downstairs, probably waiting in the garage to C4 and run out. And she's going to play downstairs, just waiting to maybe even C4 into the visa office. Fuse coming up to the roof. I'm interested to see exactly which windows he decides to fuse and whether or not the offense will push through that way. But it looks like Montaigne's already in and he's going to be coming up the garage stairs. So this looks like it's going to be a console push orientated around the garage stairs along with Fuse hitting this window now and doesn't quite pick up anybody but probably got rid of some barbed wire. Almost down Doc. Doc is lucky to even be alive here. Impact Nade's coming out, making some holes just so they can watch these windows. And Fuse now placing another one, one on the, looks like the admin, they, they know that, or it's in the bathroom, excuse me. They know that the bathroom is a common place to hold, and it looks like Fuse might flash and just go right in. They're def he's definitely just trying to gain some ground here. He's in now, and Castle might have heard him come in, but I think he was flashed at the time. He's holding the bathroom now. Might get an angle onto Doc. Doc doesn't know he's there, and Doc immediately gets killed. Now they know Fuse is in the bathroom, and the def and the, off the defense has to figure out a way to come back around. But unfortunately, their rotation is cut off, and Montaigne will call out anybody who ends up coming in for the rotate. So now we're gonna it's all going to come in for Thermite here to drone out and make sure it's safe, and now he's inside and will be planting, backwards planting in this corner next to the hatch. Ash, though, picked off by Jaeger, but the plant is still going down. Do the defense know what's going on? Do they have a cam in there? I don't think they do, and now <clears throat> it's looking very promising for the offense. Thermite takes a couple shots. Jaeger running across, but it gets killed by Fuse in the bathroom. Mira throwing a great C4, taking down Thermite, but she knows that she has to challenge Fuse, and Fuse is holding a tight angle, but is actually taken out down by Mira, and now it's all up to Montaigne, and it's a 2v1. But the bomb is planted, and that is the difference. Montaigne is gonna have a, is, might have a hard time holding this, but it's all gonna depend on whether he can get the hip fire off or maybe even a knife. Mira is gonna go for it, and he has to try to kill her. He does get the kill there if he extends? Yep, there we go. And now he's just gonna have to play defense, and Castle is not gonna be able to kill him or defuse the bomb. Great play by the attack. That was a good push. I enjoyed that a lot. What did you, what did you that, think that about was, it? That was very good. The defense was so set up for an admin push that when offense, like, they, they literally just walked right up the stairs and walked right into OBJ. And, like, none, like, nobody on the defense was ready. Exactly, and it was a great play by Fuse getting into the bathroom to hold that couch room angle to where they couldn't actually sit in there and cutting off the rotations from, uh, by Montaigne, because Montaigne, definitely, when you're pushing like that, you're just, you're not trying to get kills, you're just trying to gain some ground, give your teammates some protection, and give them some call-outs to say, hey, there's a guy over here, hey, there's a guy rotating on me, and those are the kinds of things that... You have to rely on your team to get those picks. I don't know, Fuse yeah. made me a little nervous, because when he was throwing those flashbangs, he actually flashed himself with that last one when he went to jump in. Right. But luckily, Castle, I think he might have flashed Castle as well, That's which is why him. the pre-fire, the pre-fire came out, but... Castle immediately backed off and was nervous to continue sitting it was, there. It was a very good hold. I mean, yeah. I would I would have liked to have seen like a mirror placement somewhere at the front that would have benefited them with that one at the back. Like if they don't push that inside, it's just it's, it's nothing. Exactly. I'm I'm interested to see if the, they'll take a mirror next time they go there and whether or not they'll place the mirror differently to try to adapt to the attack. But then it's at that point it's up to the offense to actually attack from a different angle and maybe they have a different push set in mind just to keep them on their toes, you know? It makes it even more interesting because say they put a mirror in that same spot and the, like, the offense actually takes over that admin side, they would actually have like a line of sight on those A windows and if somebody was to like get a plant off at that A window, yeah, whoever's sit like, sitting in an admin, he, can, like, he has an angle on that bomb. Exactly. Now, <clears throat> we have Echo here just positioning his Echo drone on the garage stairs at first. He's definitely Echo is definitely going to be playing here. And it looks like the offense here is going to look go for some kind of an admin push. I'm under the impression that they know Bandit is there, but Bandit is just waiting patiently. He knows he's not in any danger unless they have a Capital, which the offense does not have. Drones coming in here, looking around, going to see exactly what they see. They saw the Jaeger sitting underneath the windows, and they're going to find Bandit sitting in the corner. Now, Hibana and Blackbeard here. 
repelling over repelling and now glass gets taken out by smoke not quite sure from where looks like he might have ran out or something and just jumped out the window on him echo just waiting patiently on the garage stairs making sure no one pushes here but little does he know that the push is not coming from this way and ash is now on the visa stairs while sledge is trying to nade underneath bandit but those grenades are wasted, unfortunately, while Bandit is just sitting in this corner, just waiting. He can hear that. He can hear the rappels. He sees the drone. They, they're looking for him still. Can't quite spot exactly where he is, but now he's going to move, and he almost catches Blackbeard out, but Blackbeard takes him down. Blackbeard's shield is broken, but they know there's one more person in there. Wall banging right at Castle somehow doesn't kill him. Castle ends up taking down Hibana, and now Blackbeard is stuck over here with... I don't know why he hasn't put his other shield on yet, but I guess he's just waiting... Looking around, doesn't want to, you know, doesn't want to give up the angle so that Castle can rotate, but Castle's already rotated, and Castle knows he's still in these windows, and he just has to wait patiently for him and waste as much time as possible. Sledge, though, trying to come in, and there we go. Castle eventually does get taken out, and Sledge now opening up kitchen window, looking in to make sure it's safe, and I think that Jaeger... He's playing in the hallway, just waiting, making sure Ash doesn't push because he saw the smokes come up. Echo repositioning his drone, just trying to find the perfect spot to sit so that he can watch the watch for the plant. And now Ash with her Ash charge out. I think this might be a spectator glitch going on right now. <laughs> Never mind, switches back. Oh, sees, sees smoke, but can't quite pick him off. Trading some shots a little bit. And now the offense is concentrated all on one side, pushing in one direction, and the defense knows it. Now the defense knows as well that all they have to do is smoke it off and waste as much time as possible because the offense has to push. Sledge here, pushing into the hallway, getting shocked by Bandits a little bit. Blackbeard taken down by Jaeger. Sledge almost takes out uh, Jaeger, but is then taken down, and Smoke cleans up that round. Here's some very powerful defensive holds coming out of Antics so An far. Antics has impressed me with these, these holds. I don't think when the offense was pushing that admin side, I don't think they realized Castle was in there that entire time. They were so focused on Bandit. Right. Castle kind of just sat over there in that corner and just kind of chilled. Exactly. And the other thing that I want to point out is that they definitely had the right idea going, getting, getting people on the windows. They probably had someone watching the run out. But the wrong play, in my opinion, was trying to nade underneath because it's so unreliable and you could have used that to get rid of the barbed wire on Visa stairs or even burn a Jaeger if you have to for whatever yep. reason. So... Looks like the same, the, the exact same lineup coming out of Antics and Barbershop are going to do the exact same hold, but we'll, we'll, we'll see if the mirror placement gets changed because, like you said, that was, that was important. That mirror placement. Yeah, the mirror placement that other defense round wasn't positioned properly in order to prevent any kind of she's console take. In the same spot. I wonder if she's actually going to do an admin hold, but if they just push that console side again, it's, it's, it's going to be of no use. Exactly, and not only that, the defense also doesn't have a pulse, so they cannot see four from the from below if the plant does start going down and they get go down, you know, a couple defenders, say in a 3v5. Especially with that shield in the way, like, you kind of need a C4 to be, like, underneath somewhere. You could exactly. have a Valk cam somewhere, like, in a corner. You could even throw a mirror down there with a C4. You just, like, you need something to hit them underneath. Right, and depending on where Valkyrie's cameras are placed, it could, you know spell disaster for the offense but i don't think she's actually has any cameras on on site i think that they're all, one's going to be up top outside obviously and then i think the other two they're saving one for some reason that they overthrew that camera but i guess it still provides some kind of intel valkyrie now oh i think she's going to jump outside yeah i think she's going to go for some kind of jump out but and the offense doesn't know that she's going to do this but are they going to catch on right away because montaigne will hear the window break now she's droned out, and they know that she was trying to do some kind of jump out. Thatcher getting off his camera, moving in behind Montaigne. They know that Valkyrie's over there. The drone is still on her, calling her out. Placing the Claymore here on the on the staircase while trying to rotate around and maybe catch her on an angle, rotating, trying to get back upstairs. But Thatcher doesn't know Jaeger is right around the corner to his right. Jaeger might hear him, but not quite sure. He might walk right into Jaeger. He... <laughs> they walk right into each other. They walk right into each other, and Jaeger ends up getting the kill while Thatcher goes for the knife, which in my book is a big no-no. You never, never knife, yep, no matter what, no matter knife. how close someone is to you. 
Valkyrie, however, taking some shots and is now retreated back downstairs just to get as far away from the objective, just to waste as much time as possible. And Jaeger and her are going to be roaming together. Ash, though, taking control downstairs, trying to figure out, maybe catch someone else roaming, but there's no one around her. And now this same push is still coming out, the exact same push. The fuses are coming, or have already come in. Thermite throwing some smokes. He's going to go for the thermite charge on the wall. And Smoke is the only one inside of B. But they know where he is. Ash is trying to shoot him through the floor. And now somehow Montaigne gets down by, from the smoke charge. And it looks like the defense is going to bring up a bigger advantage on this than I thought they would because this push is almost dead. Thermite is on the garage stairs. They know he's coming from that way. But where's Ash going to come from? Ash almost taking down Valkyrie. Still has a couple shots to go. And there we go. Takes down Valkyrie. Still in a 4v2 with 50 seconds left. Thermite has the bomb. However, she gets Ash gets taken down from up top by Doc looking down the spiral staircase. And now it's all up to Thermite in a 3v1 because Thermite just did take down uh, Jaeger on a peak on the garage stairs. Thermite has to try to push in. He has the wall open. He can definitely get inside. But Smoke is still in there head glitching the bomb. And he has to figure out whether he knows it or not. Thermite going to push in, tries to get around the corner. But Smoke will take him down easy for Barbershop's first round in this game. It was it was an interesting push, but leaving that smoke to like be able to like re roam that room like that is kind of like I would have liked to have seen somebody repel on that window. Yeah, exactly. Maybe like push him. Yeah, because if they if the guy if the if there's someone on the window, it prevents anyone from sitting in that room. And if they are sitting in that room, they have to sit in a corner and not move. They have to sit there because there's nowhere for them to go without getting seen, called out, spotted. Just there's so like so having no one on those windows was the flaw. Was their downfall. Yeah, it was the fatal flaw in that push. But everything else seemed to go fine. It was unlucky from Thatcher, though, getting pushed by Jaeger, even though neither of them knew, neither, both of them didn't know that the other was there. And it, which led to a kind of comical moment, if I do say <laughs> so myself, where they both and panicked a little bit, but him. Jaeger came out on top. Now, I w I'm sorry, continue. Well, like, what I was thinking is, like, well, they knew two people were wrong, and they knew that the majority of their team was playing that A site. Why would they have like three of their teammates push the people that are roaming instead of actually like going like to where like where they planned on planning, pushing that one site since yeah. only smoke was inside? Yeah, I agree. Maybe they got maybe they got a little uh, too excited with how the first two rounds went, and they thought <laughs> they could just kind of do whatever they want. Which on this kills map, instead of yeah. The yeah, on this map in particular. It's a, it's a lot of angles. And now Bandit here going for a spawn kill. Two guys running towards him. He might take out Thermite. Takes a couple shots. Doesn't quite catch anybody, but they know they need to be wary because these spawn kills can smell disaster for a team if the right operator gets picked off. Bandit going back downstairs to Bandit juggle while Thermite and Thatcher coming over here to try to get the wall. Let's see if Bandit can actually catch one of the Thermites on the juggle. He, he, know, he hears it, but he doesn't know quite which one it's on. And the middle one is where Thermite went. And the Thermite might actually kill Bandit. Bandit has to hide and run away. That was very close. He narrowly escaped, but Castle gets taken down by Ash on a push somewhere else. And now Bandit's going to hide behind pipes. Ash now just moving around. Definitely got to pick from outside somewhere. And now just moving around, trying to figure out exactly where they can push. Going to open this door. Frost is behind it and knows that she's there, but then she's going to rotate somewhere else and try to find a different angle, just opening it up for herself a little bit later. They know Frost is upstairs, however, but do they have a drone on her and are they actively trying to push her? It doesn't really look like it. And I'm trying to figure out exactly where they're trying to go. Glass has a bead on Jaeger, though. They know he's in piano. And I'm guessing they know that Frost is here, too. And now they're just still just waiting. It's up to the offense here to push them and try to take them out. Ash downstairs now just being real cautious, trying to be real sneaky here. Trying to catch somebody rotating around, but can't quite find anybody. They don't know that she's there, and they're trying to prevent anyone from knowing she's there by keeping the cam alive which is sneaky, but might come back later to haunt them. As now Ash does see this rotate hole in the bathroom, and Frost is playing, is toying with death, because she does not know Ash is behind her. Ash slowly peeking out. Frost might hear her now, here in a second. Doesn't quite, does, can't quite catch her yet, but Jaeger's going to call out Ash. And Frost is just sitting there, just saying, oh uh, yeah, they won't push me, because Jaeger's there. And it's just the two teams working, to, the, the two teammates working together. Just trying to hold these hatches, prevent this upstairs push. But I think that if the offense decides to do to push, they should just push straight through the garage. And now it looks like 
Jaeger is eventually taken down by Ash. And Frost is now in the bathroom by herself. But Hibana is picked off by Bandit. And Ash, however, still knows someone's up top. He's still looking around. Doesn't, doesn't quite know where to go. And I think that Glass just holding an angle outside is going to give him just, the, just enough cover to get the plant off. But it doesn't look like they want to go for it yet. They're still a little wary. I think that that was Smoke's last smoke. Or no, he has one more and he's just trying to waste as much time as possible. But Frost actually trades onto Ash, which is good for the defense because now they're nervous of Frost playing up top. But it looks like he gets taken down from the side by Ash. Oh, actually, never mind. Bandit took out Thermite. Excuse me. And now Bandit is the last one alive. They know that he's in the kitchen, and he has to try to prevent the plan, but there's no way he's going to be able to do it. And he's then taken out by Glass, holding an angle outside, looking through the smoke. I really like the way that the offense is adapting to the way they held that. They realized last round they put so many players upstairs. They're, they're going to throw one person upstairs. They're going to put a little bit of pressure on it, but then everybody else is just going to push that downstairs. That was, I feel like that was really yeah, exactly. Just adapt, just be understanding how to adapt and not, you know, kind of pushing things like a robot, so to speak, not always trying to do the same things. And it definitely worked out for the offense, as we could see there. Right now, on the Chat scoreboard. Wants you to pull up the scoreboard right now. You know? Yeah, I'm looking. Yeah, I, I just thought to myself, I need to pull up the scoreboard <laughs> to see what the what the count is for a couple of these guys. <clears throat> looking pretty even on both sides. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Nobody's really, no one's really letting anyone down, and no one's really carrying. It's all, it all seems to be pretty even. Uh, Antics is still up one round. The score is actually three two, not uh, two two. We had to do a rehost earlier, and now we have Mira being placed behind the white van, which you know could be good, but we're gonna see. They go to play on that side of the van. It, it might help them a little bit, but it's also something to free fire through because, oh, you know, somebody's probably sitting behind that Mira. Right, and there's, it's also an unreinforced wall. I don't think they actually put a reinforcement on it. I'm just doing about this other one. Insecurity. Is she going to reinforce the wall? She... Yeah, exactly. Like, are they are they going to... Yeah, it looks like yeah, she's going to reinforce mm -hmm. it and have the mirror there like you were talking about. This is the spot that you were referring to. Put is, it, yep. is the superior mirror spot, especially for this defense. You have an Smokes. angle on the stairs from that spot. You also have an angle on the garage wall if they open. Exactly. Now, now the, the offense is going to be looking around, looking for Bandit, making sure he's not there. But the defense doesn't even have a Bandit, which I find I think it might be a bit of a mistake here because they can open the open the wall in literally 30 seconds, as they've done right here. So now Thermite getting on his drone, just looking around, sees exactly where Mira is. Sees the Mira over here, just calling out to his teammates exactly what he sees in here, making sure that they can all push properly. Glass holding an angle here, gets one shot onto Mira, and now she is very, very low. If if, Thermite, if uh, Glass can catch her out again, that'll be, put them in a, uh, a 5v4 advantage. Ash upstairs now, just opening up the floor, trying to get these angles. Might try to pick off Valkyrie from pipes. Sees Valkyrie. Valkyrie putting some shots back at her, but can't quite hit her. But now the defense is being moved around while Glaz is just outside waiting to pick them off as they try to rotate around. But it's up to Glaz to be in the right position at just the right time. He can see Valkyrie ever so slightly from up on top of the staircase. But right now the defense is being pushed back. I don't think any of them are roaming except for Jaeger, who might take out Hibana here. Does he see her? He does see her. I think Hibana spotted her as well. And now Jaeger is in very much trouble and he has to come back to the OBJ because Valkyrie has been taken down by Glaz. Yeah, you're coming back downstairs. Doesn't quite know where anybody is, but as long as he can stay alive and maybe come for a late flank, he'll ha he does have enough time and can maybe make a difference, but it's going to be very, very close. Doc docks up Mira, and now they know where Mira is. They're trying to wall bang her, trying to just get a couple shots onto her, make her move out of the way. Is she, she going to walk into the hole? No, she's not. Right now, it looks like Thermite and Glass are just waiting for, the, waiting for the okay to try to go plant. They've opened up the wall completely, and Glass is just looking through some smokes, but not pushing and Thatcher right now just trying to hold some angles, making sure no one's playing over here. And Jaeger was over here earlier. Where did he move over to? He's back on the spiral staircase, which the off which the, the offense might not expect, but Thatcher's holding an angle, watching the spiral stairs, and takes down Jaeger. Very clean. Very, very clean. Now Doc holding an angle behind this Mira, just waiting to try to pre-fire someone as they run in while Mira is playing inside or behind the white van. Smoke. 
throws a smoke just waiting. They're just waiting to try to deny the plant because it's going off. But right now, smoke gets taken down by Hibana pushing from the back, dropping the hatch. She also takes down Doc, and now Mira almost pre fires her, but they're just going to look for her. They know she's behind the white van, and they take her down. Very nice push coming out of Antics. That was a nice. That was a nice play from that Havana. She was. You could see like when Jaeger was on those spiral stairs, that she was. She was droning. I'm. I'm guessing that she was droning that entire bomb site, and she probably saw that there was nobody actually in there paying attention to that drop. Exactly, and it was great communication by them to say, mm -hmm. "Hey, Thatcher, we need, like Jaeger came from spiral stairs. We don't know where he is. Just try to hold an angle." And he was holding inside Visa, watching both staircases and trying to sound horror for Jaeger. That, time, that whole time while he was running around trying to find an angle to maybe get a pick and throw a little bit of chaos into the offense's push. But the offense definitely held that well, even though it took them a very long time to actually get in and try to plant the bomb. They knew where everyone was. They had the wall open early enough to, to gain the advantage that they needed to push in whenever they felt like it, so to speak. Mm-hmm. It was, it was overall just a very good push from Antics. I was, I was impressed. Definitely, definitely. Now, this is match point on uh, game one for Antics here. Can they seal the deal? Looks like they're going to do a very similar setup to the one that they did before that, if I remember correctly, did work out for them. Maybe it didn't. I think that this might have been the push that... Actually, that I believe it did. I believe it did work because... Oh, you're they, right. They held that admin side and that Blackbeard and Havana got picked off on the windows. Exactly, yeah, they were able to hold the admin side without too much trouble, and it just kind of won them the round right then, because it's so difficult. Once once the admin push starts kind of going bad, it's really hard to come back from it, because there's only one way to come from. Yep. And they already put so many resources into pushing that side that you kind of, once you do it, you're kind of dedicated to doing it. Yeah, once you spend a minute on those windows over there, and then you decide, hey, let's switch to the other side, it's already, you know, plus 30 seconds, or minus 30 seconds later, it's already too late. Sledge, however, taking control of this window as quickly as possible this time, just trying to hold an angle, making sure that nobody's playing around there, while Thatcher has gotten inside and is taking control downstairs, making sure nobody can see them, can see for them from underneath. Thatcher now, peeking up, droning, in A-bomb, just trying to see if anybody's actually in there or not knows that no one's there and he's telling Blackbeard hey there's nobody in here just keep holding that angle spots castle inside of the admin and now Ash has to be wary of how she peeks this and I'm sure has just gotten droned out as well and now Sledge and Ash are going to try to kind of tag team this this uh, this admin side or at least maybe like make it look like they're pushing admin but I think that as of right now the majority of their push is focused on the A ledge Sledge sees, Sledge sees him run across, doesn't know if he's still in there or not. Definitely has to know now that he's repelled. Castle is close. He knows Bandit cannot run out. This might be his moment to, to swing in. They know he's stuck in that corner. Nibana had to have seen him or call him out. Nibana pre-firing Castle, gets a couple shots but doesn't kill him. Castle firing back. Thatcher does take down Jaeger, probably on the roam. And now they have two people trapped inside of Admin. They just have to get them out of there. But can they figure it out? Because it the kills come down, but they're traded out immediately. Castle is still in here. And do they know Castle's in here? They have to try to figure it out. They have to see Castle running across, going inside of the kitchen. Gets pinched by uh, by uh, Ash and Thatcher right there. But, and now it's all up to Echo and Smoke, which, which Smoke actually picks someone off with the smoke grenade there. And this is definitely possible. There's only 50 seconds left. It's 3v2. Smoke can 100% hold this off, along with the help of Echo, if he can play it. If they can play it properly and waste just enough time to stop the plant from going off. But Blackbeard definitely has Smoke pinned in here, and he knows he's here. Now Echo takes down, takes down Thatcher, looking for Ash. Doesn't know that she crossed. Smoke is fighting Blackbeard. Ash runs in, chokes the shot on Smoke. Almost it's taken out. And now Echo getting on his drone. This is the moment that they want. This is what they want. They don't want the plant to go down. They have to look for it. He knows they're both outside. He's just going to wait and Echo the bomb out. This is, this is the only... I don't know why he dropped it right there. They can go for the plant one more time. I guess he's trying to change his position. And there we go. The defenders win that round, clutching up the match point. Great plays from Echo there and great plays holding them off and wasting time from smoke.
if that castle would have just sat in that corner for another like two or three seconds, Ash was just about to get up and run the other way. Oh, I know. I was so I was so excited for Castle to be able to do something there. So when he got up and ran, it kind of like made my heart break a little bit. Exactly, and right and funny <laughs> enough, funny enough, right as I was about to like leave the lobby and go for a remake, my app crashed. So I have to oh. wait for the R6 to reload once again. But I'm really enjoying what I'm seeing from both these teams because right now, what it looks like to me is that they both know what they're doing, and. It's just coming down to superior teamwork out of antics, at least in my opinion, so far. The the strats they have, they're honestly they're just overpowering Barbershop in almost every way and like almost every way possible. Barbershop, they they seem to be focusing on one side maybe a little too much, putting all the resources into one push. They're not like they're not they're not adapting the way they need to adapt. They're I feel like they're set on one kind of strat, and they're all just like they're like you said earlier. They're just robots. They're just they're not moving. They're not adapting. You need to adapt in this game if you want to win. Exactly. They were kind of they were just kind of butting heads, trying to just kind of run headstrong yep. into the defense's setup, which and can, sitting which... on those windows for a minute, for a minute and a half. That's it's too much time. If you're gonna push something, you need you need to push it. And you need to push it hard because you need to take that one side that that one side over. Because then you have that, like the entire rest of the round to figure out what you're going to do. Are we going to push the hallway? Are we going to push like Visa doorway? Like, what are we going to do? But they waste too much time just sitting outside on those windows. That now, it's kind of biting them in the ass. I, I do. I agree 100%. But I do also want to give them credit because they, they pushed that and they had the 3v2 advantage. But it was just for the fact, the, the simple fact that Smoke and... Uh, Echo were the last two alive. Echo Echo played that really smart. He backed off into that bathroom right away, and he got on his Echo. Yeah, it, not not only did he play it really smart, but it was just Smoke and him team working. Just had they just knew they have to waste time, just waste as much time as possible, and there was no way for the offense to kind of come back from it because that they just they they didn't have a way to stop the Echo unless they knew where it was immediately. If that Blackbeard would have just peeked that A window and realized, hey, like, there's nobody else in A, it's just Smoke, he could have picked off Smoke on his own. But he was so focused on, like, not getting shot from a different angle that Ash had to go in and do it herself. And she almost died doing it. And then, like, Echo immediately picked her off. Yeah, it was... It, I just... I, I just... I liked it, that very last round. And the, sc the score line, I just want to point out, does not quite didn't show how close some of those rounds really were. Like, that very last round mm -hmm. could have definitely gone in the offense's favor, and we could have been playing for, a, for an overtime. But, because I, I, I thought that the offense pushed that well. It just took a little bit too long, and then Smoke and Echo did their job. They delayed, 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 and then stopped the plant from going down, which is all they needed to do to win that round. It is true. It is true. It could have gone either way. I was... I was... I was kind of hoping to see it go in like the offensive way with the way they pushed it, but Echo just backed off and Echo did what Echo does, prevents right. the clamp. Yes, 100%. <clears throat> now let me just make sure I have the correct map waiting to go here. Pretty sure the second map is, oh nope, it's Cafe. Good mm. thing I checked that. I wonder if they'll keep bringing Echo on this map. I hope that they do, because I, 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 I love I love Echo. <laughs> <laughs> I don't I don't use them quite as often as I used to because I'm having a lot of fun just playing other operators and just messing around. But when I driving do... around with that echo drone, there's a lot of satisfaction in that. It's fun. Oh yeah, it's it's 100. percent It there's nothing more satisfying when you're playing echo and you echo like one or two guys and then your teammates come and just and just destroy them and mm -hmm. just take and just take back over what the offense has worked so hard to take. So what are they gonna bring? Yeah, it, they they're not they're not bringing a mirror. It looks like they're going for a very standard setup. Whereas Antics is bringing Glass. I'm interested to see if they take a Montane. I don't really see it being very useful for this uh, for this one. But I think that uh, oh, I think Black that Barbershop. Yeah, and and a Capitao. I like the Capitao choice and a Fuse. Okay, so. I like I like where this is going. They're using they're trying to utilize the operators that have the most utility to 
to gain the areas that they need to get control of and to hold the angles that they need to take control of. So I'm guessing, you know, they're going to try to get into Christmas and then when the plant's starting to go down, they're going to fuse, you know, some windows on near A-bomb mm -hmm. to try to release that tension a little bit because you know that there's always a guy head glitching that bomb and just holding an angle there that's very difficult to get him off of. But I think that the defense here is going to go... They, I think that they've, they've kind of uh, learned from their mistakes a little bit, so to speak. They they realize, okay, well, they got the plants off at last in those last few rounds, and we maybe if we had a guy underneath to see for them, we could have, uh, you know, won, won them easier or thrown them off guard. And I think that taking Pulse and Valkyrie and Mute, that's technically potentially three C4s, but Valkyrie has used one to make a rotate hole, and Mute has actually taken a deployable shield, which surprises me, but... You know, they're still going to have Pulse trying to play downstairs. Pulse looking like maybe he's going to go for some kind of spawn kill or just make it look like he's going for a spawn kill. I think that he's just trying to feign it, just try to scare the attacking team, try to... Waste a little bit of time. Yeah, keep him off guard, but Pulse definitely just, yeah, just trying to keep him off guard. And they're going to notice that all these windows are open, that maybe they'll waste time trying to drone him out and find him downstairs. But I doubt we're going to see that coming out of uh, mm -hmm. coming out of the offense. But right now, Ash is distracted, so that it's doing its job. Even if it's for only for 10 seconds, it did its job, technically. That was an interesting I'm, repel. I'm interested to see where that Muke shield is. I want to know what he's doing with it. Yeah, it's some... I, I think he placed it in the bar under the skylight where, like, the thermite wall gets opened and you plant the bomb. Okay, okay. I'll put it somewhere over there. I'm not quite sure what the purpose of it is, technically, but... Thermite over here placing the claymore doesn't want to get run out on, knowing that this is a very common spot to get run out on by a certain operator, and they know now that someone is playing inside of the Christmas. You playing downstairs, yeah, Pulse just waiting downstairs patiently, trying to make sure that nobody, you know, comes in downstairs without a drone. And I think Jaeger was in Christmas, but gave it up. Right now, smoke's coming out. And a fuse going off on A bomb, like I was talking about. Downs Doc, but doesn't quite get the kill. Probably heard him yell and is going to try to go for another one. Might get pre fired by Doc, going for another fuse. Doesn't end up getting it. They get the fuse off. Is he going to pick off anybody? It doesn't look like he is. But now the defenders are in a very cramped position because they're scared to move freely in the in their own bomb site. Doc holding an angle from the freezer while Valkyrie and uh, Jaeger are holding angles in the white stairs. Sees Blackbeard, takes him down. It destroys the shield first because it's peeking out from the side. Pulse holding an angle on the hatch now, which is waiting for someone to drop down. He had to have heard a uh, fuse drop right there, but there, he might get droned out. He might be able to throw a C4, but you never know exactly how this staircase works because it's very tricky at times. Jaeger holding an angle here behind the A-bomb like I was talking about. This is the spot. This is the spot that they do not want him to sit in. That Capital Bolt coming in, and now Capital actually himself is, is trying to push into the freezer, just trying to gain some ground here. Looking for Jaeger, doesn't quite catch him. Jaeger look, trying to trying to peek him, sees Doc, might try to go for Doc instead. Jaeger having a very tough time trying to kill this Capital, and the plant does go down. Capital though, going for Jaeger, does take him down. Doc has an opportunity right here to revive him, but he might not he might not get it in time. I think he tried to go for the revive, but couldn't quite hit it, and now it looks like it's all up to. Pulse and Jaeger, but it's in a 2v2. Capital ends up taking down uh, Mute, and now Pulse tries to wall bank Capital, can't quite hit him, and gets shot in the back by Ash coming through the freezer. That Capital play was ridiculous. Oh yeah, Capital gave gave them all the time in the world that they needed to plant. He distracted them so long, the plant went off without a hitch, and then he was even able to pick up, I think, three Two kills. kills. Three kills. I think he picked up three that kills was, there. That was crazy. Yeah. Doc and Great Jaeger push. were so focused on that Capital over in that corner that they just walked in, they planted it, and they were fine. Exactly. Great play. Great offensive push coming out of Antics. And they did utilize the utility in the positions that I described that they would most likely use them in. Um, but maybe if they could just get a little bit different timing on maybe their fuses or when they shoot the Capital arrows, it would be even better. But, you know, we're already talking, we're nitpicking a very strong push as it already yeah, was. that was a very good push. Yeah. So now, Antics taking a Mira up here. I imagine that they're going to, you know, place one Mira facing A and maybe one facing the Christmas uh, mm -hmm. cigar lounge. But 
I think that having two Miras like that in that in that sort of position is more of a disadvantage than an advantage. On paper, it sounds nice. You have one watching the bomb and one watch one watching a bomb and one watching a room that you know. If they get both of those open, that is literally a line of sight, like line of sight straight through Christmas to A. It's just a great shot. Exactly, and it's not like you can. It's, it's not like you can freely roam inside of this freezer. You you have to be careful of the skylight in a like a well placed Happy Tower arrow. It's spelled disaster for anybody playing in there. Now the offense does have a Capital, and we're going to see exactly how they utilize him to play. We saw Capital coming in big last round, not necessarily for the utility, but just for the being able to push and communicate. So we're going to see how they utilize him this time. They also have a Blackbeard. Blackbeard moving up to these windows on the white hallway. Just going to peek in, try to maybe get a pick off of somebody playing running around in Cigar, not noticing what's going on. Sees Jaeger run by, and it almost gets pre-fired. Luckily, he was not in a position to actually get hit. But Blackbeard here playing very cautiously. Does not want to get killed from a weird spot and is just looking around, making sure no one's in the bathroom. Sledge now has opened the hatch and is letting Hibana and Capitao drone for him while he's trying to figure out exactly where he needs to go next. Maybe he needs to get rid of some barbed wire or something or somewhere. And now a run out comes out from Bandit taking out Blackbeard, even though Ash is watching the run out. Oh, a, goodness. A, yeah, a very, very unorthodox run out coming out of the front door. Now he's staying inside of the bakery. Ash, though, coming up behind him. He doesn't know that Ash is there. Ash might see him and <laughs> misses the one tap a couple times, oh. but ends up picking him up anyway. And now it's a 4v4. While the offense still hasn't really made any headway to take over anything. Capitao sitting above the skylight. Sees Mira rotate back and forth, knows where the rotate hole is, and we do have a disconnect coming out of uh, coming out of Barbershop. Unfortunately, it's you know we can't remake right away, but we will remake after this round, and we're gonna put up the scoreboard real fast just so we see how many kills each person has before we have to do that. Capital just holding an angle up here, just trying to you know hold a spot. Frost still playing in cigar, getting droned out by Sledge, while Hibana is holding a higher a hard angle here, just trying to hold her back, but now. Hibana has to get inside. They have to make some kind of headway into a room that can help them get inside and plant the bomb. Unfortunately for them, Hibana, if she uses all of her charges trying to get in here, ooh, ends up getting c 4 from uh, underneath by Valkyrie. Valkyrie with a well-positioned cam that you saw her shoot. And Jaeger over here holding holding this angle up here with iron sights. Very, very, very surprising in my opinion, but he's still holding the angle that I was talking about before. That angle is very deadly. And right now, it's looking like the offense is just trying to make some headway, and they end up taking down Frost. Takes her out with a grenade. It's up to Capitao and Sledge to try to push in here and make some headway in a 3v2. Not all hope is lost. They can do it. It's just going to be very difficult. Now, Capitao pushing in. Does he know Valkyrie's there? Doesn't know Valkyrie's there at all, and Valkyrie takes him down easily. While Sledge also gets taken down by Valkyrie, and that will seal the round for Antics. I would say that that would be like an interesting defensive hold, but overall that was, it was a pretty basic hold. They just, they got the shots, they got the picks they needed. That Valk play underneath probably saved Frost's life, but overall it was, it was a, it was a good hold. Well, Valk was ground. playing, Valk was playing underneath and, and did get somebody with the C4 from mm -hmm. the red staircase, but I think Kibana that- Kibana while she was opening that wall to push Frost. Yeah, but at least she got the wall open, because mm -hmm. getting the wall open at least got Capitao in there, and Capitao and Sledge definitely could have clutched it. It was just some good rotations from the defense that caught the offenders a little off guard. They had no idea that Valkyrie had rotated in there after uh, Frost had been killed. And the bandit run out from the, the main door in Bakery was awfully interesting. I don't think I've ever actually seen that. Well, it definitely, I've seen it before, and it definitely can come in handy to, like, have an unorthodox run out like that, because that's not the, that's not the typical spot you try mm -hmm. to kill somebody on when they're on those repels, but Bandit killing Blackbeard there definitely that relieved was, a lot big. of pressure. Yeah, it relieved a lot of pressure off of the defense, because now I know, okay, no one's repelling, and even though Ash did trade back the kill on Bandit, at that point, the offense had made no progress to actually getting inside or planting the bomb. So, and Blackbeard was cutting off that rotation from the white hallway to Christmas and was exactly. basically pinching defensive players in their corners. And with him dead, that just opened up more like their roaming abilities. Yeah. <clears throat> and I'm gonna actually going to have to... I tried to re I tried to make the lobby and then I accidentally made it. 
as a player instead of a or a ded- made it a player host instead of dedicated. Yeah. So it might take a second to rehost. But what else are you seeing? What else do you see that's interesting or want you want to elaborate on? Because you know you're just as experienced as I am when it comes to this game. So I'm sure you have something that you're thinking about that, you know, I we haven't touched on so far. Well, the who was it? The Jaeger Ironside sitting behind A. That was for, to me. That's interesting because you don't see Jaeger sitting in OBJ. Definitely not with Ironsides very often. But Jaeger playing OBJ like that, and they had who Valk Valk roaming instead of Jaeger. To me, that is that's interesting because as of like I played Valk a lot, and to me, Valk's main job is like because she knows where her cameras are. She knows what she's gonna be looking at. To me, Valk's kind of like the person that's gonna be kind of like hanging around OBJ. Like sitting on her cam, giving her roamers the call outs. To me, that's what Valve does. Right, right. But having Jaeger Ironside sitting behind A bomb instead, that threw me off. And I mean, you never know. It might have been a mistake. He might have meant to have sights on it, and it just, the game just decided not to give it to him for whatever reason. Yeah, that's true. But I, I, like, I've seen a lot of people run around with banded Ironsides too. Like his, like his Iron Sights, I would be a little, like, I would, I would understand a little bit because that one's not bad, but Jaeger's just. Oh yeah, and especially with his, with the recoil on his weapon yeah. being so you, you, you almost need like at least a hollow on it. Yeah, I I 100% agree. So, sorry for the delay everybody. We just got to get these guys back in the game. So far, Antics is up 2 to 0, second map, and they're looking very strong. I don't see any real holes in their defense. I don't see any holes in their attack. Um so Barbershop definitely has their work cut out for him and is going to have to figure out a way to to come back from this if they want to win this match. Just waiting on one person, and I think there might be a little bit of confusion as to who's on what side, but I'm pretty sure <laughs> Antics is supposed to be on offense. Yep. All these remakes always throw me off, and it threw me off even more when I was actually playing custom games because it always just steers. You you never know because with this with this break in between these rounds, maybe Antics is getting a little soft, and Barbershop will come back much stronger. Like you you never yeah, know. I've, I've I've seen some teams come back from like a a four one lead, saying you know close qualifiers for Canada. It happens. It does happen. Yeah, it does happen. Because sometimes the break is all you need to kind of clear your head a little bit, maybe drink some water or something. No, it and sounds so silly. Maybe you just need but... those rounds to like figure out how you're going to adapt to like the way they hold. And those rounds, like that's how you figure it out. You lose, you talk about it, you find out what went wrong, and then just you switch things up. Yeah, it can be it can be kind of uh, beneficial as like a tactical timeout kind of thing, even though it's an unintended mm-hmm. error in the game. So, <laughs> you know. It, happens. It, can, it, it can it can be beneficial in some ways. Now the offense here, instead of taking a capital, taking an IQ, and I'm not quite sure what the what the reasoning is for this. Maybe they're nervous about Valkyrie cameras being positioned outside, and they're gonna try they're gonna look for them. But I don't think Valkyrie has thrown any cameras outside in, in either of the past defense rounds that or in the defense round that they played. So Yeah, I, I don't think she has it. Maybe they were thinking like a pulse is gonna play up top or in an area. Yeah, the other the or, other thing I was thinking about was grenades. She has grenades. I yeah, I know, and that's and that's the reason I was thinking. I was like, did they, how much trouble did they have getting through barbed wire last time? And I don't think they had any trouble. I don't think that they had any kind of issues at all. Now Looks like Mira opening these hatches. Definitely, someone's going to be playing downstairs, trying to utilize them, or maybe go for a late flank. But what I'm, what I, what I notice going on here, maybe a little bit of miscommunication there, trying to throw the C4 to make the rotate hole, but Rookros's impact nade is that that's the hole that Vitality used against us at land and killed Bones through the hatch from downstairs, standing on top of the table. And I'm very interested to see if anybody is going to play in that position. But I think that the offense is maybe a little bit kind of keen to what's going on here, and I think that they might have shot out that window. But no, they didn't. It's definitely the defense shot out that window, so we're going to see how the offense sees that and if they decide they want to play off of it. 
I wonder right if now, somebody's gonna be jumping out of that window. I would. That would be very crazy. I don't think I've ever seen anybody jump out on someone from that window. But IQ is taking this, is looking at this window and looking at it very cautiously. Doesn't want to get, doesn't want anybody to get killed, and maybe can get a quick pick out of here. But I don't think that's gonna end up happening. She's gonna move over to the to the side. But is look at this. She is nervous of the window and ends up deciding to repel on a different location, which I like. But it looks like Fuse is already fusing the white hallway. And that almost kills Jaeger. It took away his Jaeger for sure. But they don't know if they killed him or not. Fuse now going to these windows over here, but it looks like the offense has already, or the defense has already hit them out a little bit so that he cannot fuse. He might try to go for it anyway, but could get pre-fired. Just trying to bait out some of the pre-fires. He ends up getting both, or one of him, he only has one fuse left, ends up getting one of them shot off. Now, IQ, just trying to watch his run out, I'm guessing in a very unorthodox location, and it'd be, it'd be very impressive if she killed someone upside down on that rappel. But it looks like Ash and Thermite here, taking things a bit more of a bit more standard approach. Thermite opening the wall to Cigar. They're trying to get rid of the barbed wire here. Thermite will run down here and doesn't have a Claymore, so he cannot position it on Red Stairs to watch it, but now Thermite has, feels like he's done his job and is now coming downstairs to catch Jaeger on the rotate. Jaeger and Thermite in a gunfight will get pushed from behind, though, by... Uh, by Valkyrie to help out Jaeger. Now they have the diffuser down, which is a huge, huge mistake from the offense. The offense now has to come back, come downstairs to pick up the bomb. And it looks like the defense might have just caught the break that they were looking for because Thermite brought the bomb to a very unfavorable location for them. Blackbeard will take down Smoke, but the offense still has to come downstairs and Ash knows it. Ash is coming around, looking around, trying to figure out exactly where the defenders are sitting and is going to open up the wall. The pre-fire could have killed Valkyrie if she wasn't positioned behind the train. And now v Jaeger knows that, knows that she's there. Ash wanting to push in, and Jaeger just moving back to hold an angle. Uh, uh, Ash could actually pick up the bomb and run away here. Doesn't have to challenge this at all. Ends up getting shot by Jaeger a little bit. Did she pick up the bomb, though? No, she still did not pick up the bomb. They know that there's two people downstairs here, and Ash is working so hard to try to pick up this bomb, and her teammates are not really supporting her. Blackbeard still upstairs, fielding around with uh, with uh, Rook and Mira. Jaeger though will take down Ash, while Blackbeard and uh, her, while uh, IQ gets taken down by Rook, and it looks like the defense will win this round, just based off of the fact that Thermite dropped the bomb in probably the worst location he could have possibly dropped it in. That actually really confused me. I don't know why. I could I could see like Thermite going underneath to see like hey maybe there's a pulse plane under there waiting for the floor, or like. Like, yeah, I mean, Jaeger did end up dropping, so maybe he was expecting that. But why would you bring the bomb with you downstairs? Yeah, it was it was definitely not a good move by any means, and it cost them the round there. But what I do mm -hmm. want to want to say is that Thermite instinctually anticipated that once enough pressure was placed on the guy in Christmas, they would drop down the hatch because they obviously droned it out. But it was just the fact that he that, had that the bomb. It was good game sense. Yeah, yeah. It was good game sense, but just bad execution because, you know, it could, if he if he had gotten the kill, it would have been a different story, but he, he obviously didn't, and it ruined that attack for his entire team. If anything, I would have sent Ash underneath at her watch the rotation like that. While it, maybe Thermite was to, like, drone Christmas a little bit further, it's going to be Thermite's job to open that one Christmas wall anyway. So why would Thermite go downstairs yeah, and exactly. risk dying like that? Dying, yeah, dying while while one having the bomb and without using the second Thermite charge to open up the, an available area to plant the bomb just lost them that round 100%. Now, we're going to see Antics holding the fireplace and mining room. First time we've seen it this game so far. And I'm interested to see if they, what kind of angles they hold. I'm, I'm anticipating judging from the operators they took for a very, uh, very standard hold, so to speak. Like, we we're going to have Pulse roaming probably upstairs. Jaeger roaming downstairs. Like, none of this looks too out of the ordinary to me. But... But can the offense formulate their attack and open up the hatch and take control of the areas they need to take control of? It looks like Jaeger, though, did end up picking off Thatcher, which isn't a huge kill, but definitely throws the attack off guard. And like I said before, see, like he doesn't have iron sights anymore. Now he has an ACOG on it, so I think it was a mistake. Well, then again, he was playing, he was playing Valkyrie last time, playing underneath. 
Oh, okay, it was a different person playing Jaeger, never mind then. So Sledge here coming down, throwing a drone, sees Bandit playing under this hatch, now knows he's running and will call him out to the team that he has moved on. And it looks like Capital is going to drop down, try to drop down behind him. The offense definitely doing a good job of taking control of angles up top and trying to get inside, but they still have not killed Bandit, and I don't think they know exactly where he is. They're playing very cautiously, and now he does get taken down by Capital right as I switch away from him, of course. Uh, Blackbeard's going to be watching the flank here from the red hatch. A very good angle for him, not only because he can catch anybody from above, but he has his shield, and the defenders will not get a lucky shot on him, at least not in my opinion anyway. Rook going to be playing inside of reading room. Does he have the hatch up top reinforced? No, he does not, and Jaeger is with him now. They're going to hold down the reading room to try to prevent that push into B-bomb, but I think that... The offense is going to formulate their attack focused on mining more than they are on the dining room because that's just the way that they're set. They're getting set up. They're you know putting claymores up so that, to watch the flank. Capital and Blackbeard are moving around, moving towards mining. It looks like Hibana is going to open up one of the walls to mining. Maybe just a hole for Blackbeard and then maybe a, a crouch hole for everyone else. Not quite sure how it's going to work, but they're just watching flanks, just waiting patiently. They know they have a little bit of time to relax a bit but they have to start moving soon or else this push will fizzle out and the defense will have easy picks holding the angles that they need to hold. Pulse here just waiting for someone to drop hatch and pulsing the white stairs, just looking around making sure no one's over there. Rook is still playing, is not is not playing and reading anymore. He's watching the hallway, sees Capital. Capital ends up taking him down instantly. Now Capital pushing in, gonna fire off the hallway, almost gets killed by Jaeger, playing on those reading room stairs. And it, now it looks like they're inside and uh, Valkyrie did a great double kill onto Hibana and Capital, dropping the diffuser, and now it's all up to Blackbeard in a 3v1 with 10 seconds left. And get, she gets, he gets taken down by him, by uh, Valkyrie as well. That was almost, al almost a very good push on the offensive side. When Capital killed that rook in that hallway, that was, I would say that would be like an exceptional shot because he was holding the tightest angle. But yeah, then not, Valk, yeah. the Valk turned around and killed Cap when he was looking away and that like that was just unfortunate overall but yeah not not it, only it started was started off as a good push not only was Rook holding a, a a tight angle but I also want to point out that the way he was holding it you know crouched in the hallway in between a couple little like shelves or whatever mm -hmm. you know those those kinds of angles are the ones that can potentially win you a game or even a round even though Rook didn't win that gunfight there it's those kinds of angles that these teams find these competitive teams find that can maybe even win an entire match for them if the other team isn't aware of how powerful that spot is. That would be a very hard shot to hit, especially like him headshotting him right off, like right he, off the he bat. Li he, was, yeah. he literally flip, like flicked to his head and just killed him. Yeah, I uh, wish I could have seen it from. Shot. I wish I could have seen it from Capital's perspective because. Yeah, I it, I don't remember. Was he running an ACOG? I couldn't. I don't yep. remember. He was running an ACOG, so maybe he just slow peeked it, or maybe he had some intel as to say, "Hey, Rook is in the hallway," and he was already maybe pre-aimed a little bit. But you, you guys, advantage for you right there. Yeah, if, if you guys understand what we're talking about here, because now I like this drone placement <laughs> from Capital. It just looks like he's riding a roller coaster all over the map here, and he's just gonna obviously be watching for spawn kills just to make sure nobody's actually spawn killing anywhere that they don't want them to. That or that they're unaware of. Because sometimes when defenders do go for spawn kills and you know that it's there, it's an easy pickup on the kill. But that's not the case here. Jaeger going to be playing upstairs now, holding an angle up in the skylight. Just watching this angle here, and this is one of, I think, Goddess's favorite angles to hold in particular. Oh, it is. It is. Because <laughs> this, <laughs> this angle you is so me on deadly. This map and rank, you can always expect me to always be there on that, that upstairs hold. Exactly. Now Jackal droning out Rook here knows he's there, but is also going to call out that Rook moved and ran away. And it's, and also seeing a Jackal here is not only surprising, but I think it's very interesting and I like seeing it because it's trying to implement the new operators. Definitely going to try to track his footprints to see exactly where he went. And now Rook probably should go back to the OBJ, but it looks like he's just holding his ground. just anticipating okay jackal scanned me i was standing over there so he has to be over there somewhere and now it looks like he's going to move around just try to waste as much time as possible but unfortunately he is not a fast operator 
while Mira takes down the planter, going for this quick plant that they looks like they're going for, coming from the red staircase. And Capitao now taking control of the hallway, might run into the angle that Doc is holding, but lays down just in time. And Ash is going, or not, not at, or Ash was going for the plant, faked it, and is now going for another one. Jackal looks like he got picked off by Doc, exactly. And now Castle coming back around, kills the planter, and then the defense just cleaned that up real fast. That was a very great quick push coming out of the offense, but the defense was set up just, I think, Three just games. perfectly. Was great. Yeah, I think the defense was set up just perfectly to to hold that because each each attacker just got pushed from a different angle one after another. It was and literally going through my head. Like, I was trying to, like, pinpoint where all the defensive operators were before I even got the chance. Everybody on offense was dead. Exactly. Castle made a great push to go in there and prevent the plant from going down. I'm not quite sure exactly where he came from, but Doc holding that angle from dining room definitely helped out picking off Jackal because I think Jackal probably would have killed Castle as he was rotating out of the train room into mining if he was able, still able to hold that angle, you know? That is very true. <clears throat> Can't underestimate those those angles. Those those three like the three armor characters, you can almost always expect them to have an angle somewhere watching something. Oh exactly. Matter, like are you ready for it or are you gonna run in and get yourself killed? Yeah, and that's and that's definitely the strength to those those operators and some people play them very, very well. There's almost nothing you can do sometimes when certain operators are holding certain angles. Personally probably my favorite thing to do on this game is hold an angle. <laughs> You and you and me both. <laughs> now, once again, we have Mira getting placed facing uh, Christmas, and I I think that this Mira placement is good. But like I said, they have to be wary of the skylight and their rotations that they're making. But we also discussed this earlier how having both of these Miras in a line in a linear formation. Can probably, if it gets taken over by the offense, be a huge issue and end up biting them in the ass. Honestly, I would like to see the offense bring a, bring a twitch and try to like get those mirrors open. Like they've seen her play mirror on that spot both times, and the mirror goes in the same spot both times. Why would you like? I would like to see them try to open. The well, one thing that I definitely want to point out in that regard is that that's definitely a viable option, but I think that teams have to practice it. They have to be prepared for it. They don't know, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's something that they can't be prepared for, because what if they don't bring a Mira and now you don't have a sledge to get rid of barbed wire and you just have a twitch? And while you might be able to get rid of the ADS, if there's nothing to get rid of the barbed wire, then that's a huge issue. Mm -hmm. Now, Valkyrie camera once again under the red hatch, and Ash has already dropped and is just... Trying to hold an angle here, making sure no one comes up from below, just trying to take control, waiting for her teammates to tell her, like, hey, like, there's someone over here, push them, or, try, you know, get rid of the barbed wire, just waiting. It looks like Frost right now is getting pushed from one of the windows, but she's holding this tight angle here, which is a very, very common spot to be held. She can definitely get some kills here if they push in and don't realize that she's there, but it looks like Thermite has opened the wall, and now they're going to get in. But do they know Bandit is directly to the right? I don't think that they know. Thermite looking for Frost, could wallbang her through the chair, but can't quite get her. Bandit, though, knows Thermite's there, and now they're trying to wallbang him. Ends up, Bandit ends up taking down Ash and gets killed by Bandit as well. Bandit here coming in huge for the for the defense, but then but then ends up getting taken out by Sledge. And they still once they still have this time, once again, do not have that wall open, and it looks like now they know that Sledge is there and they're gonna try to pre-fire him because they're seeing him through the Mira. Frost, however, is low. If they can kill Frost and make it into a 3v3, they'll have a much better chance because then they will have control of this room. But it looks like Frost, realizing that her days are numbered, is going to back off and maybe go for some kind of late flank. Capitao here, still above the skylight. His positioning is good if the plant is going to come down, but the plant has not even come close to going down, so him being up here doesn't really help the... Sledge and Blackbeard who are struggling to take back control because Sledge is currently the only one in the building and even though they have a Claymore watching their flank, they're still in a very bad spot and they don't they don't quite have what it takes to get through all this barbed wire in time to plant the bomb, especially since they have to come through a doorway and not through the, the wall, which is typical. Jaeger though, however, holding the angle we were talking about before, sees Sledge, shoots him in the head and doesn't kill him. I guess that's just rainbow for you. And now in a 3v2, it is up to Jaeger 
and Frost, but now they're, the plant is going down and they're not going to be able to stop it. Sledge somehow getting it, and the attackers end up winning the round because Capitao is above the skylight and is, is in the proper position to pick them off as they're rotating to try to stop the plant. That was very well played on Capitao's part. I think it was very well played on Sledge's part and yeah. Blackbeard's to get into a position that they can like actually get the plan off. It wasn't looking very good for them for a minute because the wall wasn't open for them to See, backwards I kind plan of, it. I'm kind of, like there I I'm, I'm kind of okay with like Thermine not opening that wall cuz I feel like they would be so focused on that mirror that's sitting in that's sitting in the freezer, mirror could easily just pick off Thermite right away. So I feel like honestly oh, yeah. That, that door is, push yeah. there would have is smarter on their move. I know yeah. it was probably accidental because their thermite was killed, but I still feel like that was like honestly how they would need to push that. But you're you're a hundred percent correct because the Mira the Mira being on that wall does really prevent thermite from opening that, which is very, very important for a lot of attacks attacking the up top. So Definitely them pushing the way that they did ended up working out for them. But I also can't help but feel like Jaeger kind of got, you know, like a little screwed because it looked like to me like he shot him in the face. What did you, did you think that it was a headshot? I feel or you like think he, he shot him in the face. Yeah, exactly. And, that, and Sledge wasn't even looking at him. It's a, you know, this game it's, is... It's a siege thing. Yeah, it's that's, that's just siege for you. Like, I had a C4 blow up right next to me in rank the other day that got thrown from under a hatch to me. And I, I could have caught it. I could have caught it and thrown it back, and it didn't kill me, even though it blew up right next to me. So, I don't know. Siege has issues. One shot headshots that just do not work. Exactly. Now, I'm interested to see how the offense is going to push this, because they didn't bring a Capital like they have in the past. And they did bring a Glass, so... They did bring a Twitch, and they do have a Mira. Yeah, I like so, this already. Yeah, let's see exactly where this where these Twitch drones are going. It looks like I can't tell if this icon in the bottom left me means that Twitch has one one Twitch left, or if it means that Twitch. If there's still like, like a like a one at the bottom, that means she still has one left. This is probably right. her spawn Twitch drone. So that just right, got right. muted. Exactly, and this is the other thing you said. Bring a Twitch, or the defense said we're gonna bring a mirror. The they offense said we're gonna bring a Twitch, him. and now the defense says well we're gonna bring a mute. And that's, you know, just good planning on the defensive part of all this because they know how important keeping that mirror closed is. Especially if you drop that twitch from the skylight. Yeah, exactly. Glaz here just holding angles, trying to figure out exactly where anybody is. And the offense is trying to drone, but they're having problems. Those mutes are proving to be more effective than anything. And it looks like Twitch ends up getting taken down by Jaeger, who is holding this angle here in this corner. Very, very common angle. And also very important. Now Thermite has opened the wall, and Angle is going to, and uh, uh, Jaeger is going to sit in this corner and just try to hold them off, delay them as much as possible. And it looks like while Mira, Valkyrie, and or it looks like Valkyrie's going for a flank. I was going to say like if Mira is holding the angle in the freezer, but it doesn't look like anybody's holding it. Actually, Bandit is, and he is seen. He's spotted by Glass, but they. I think that they're. This attack is kind of fizzling out, mainly because they, they don't want to push this mirror. They cannot push in here without getting pre-fired by a bandit. I think that the offense might be trying to rotate around to a different angle. And Glass sees Valkyrie, takes a couple shots at her. Valkyrie narrowly escapes. And we'll, we're going to see if the offense will try to push her. But I don't. Th I think that's just wasting time. They only have 40 seconds, about 45 seconds left. And they know that Jaeger is in this corner, but Jaeger, Jaeger is still playing very patiently, holding a very tight angle here. And Bandit knows... That Thermite is in this corner, but he's worried about Glass now. Glass trying to hold an angle here, trying to take out Bandit so they can have a little bit of pressure and are able to attack into Cigar and take out uh, Jaeger, who's still sitting in this corner. Takes a couple shots down at Sledge. Bandit ends up taking down Ash while Sledge is still trying to push, but it's immediately traded back out. It is still 3v2 or 3v3, but Mute takes down Sledge coming through. Mute almost gets killed by Glass with the. Uh, the push coming from the bathroom and now Thermite has to try to plant while Glass like holds an angle here but Glass has to come in and there's no way he can hold an angle to sufficiently prevent them from killing him Thermite has to try to go for the plant here but it's too late and he gets down the defenders win that round this will be match or uh, this will be match point for uh or excuse me not get not match point game point for uh barbershop right yeah for barbershop interesting like we talked we talked about before how 
the uh, the breaks in between rounds from a disconnect can favor a team, and that's what we're seeing right here because I think that they've come back and won either three or four sh rounds straight. I think I think they've won. I think they've won four straight. Yeah, and we're gonna see here though if Antics can win around and push it into overtime. And unfortunately, if overtime does occur, we will have to do a rehost so that the overtime rounds are positioned properly. Now, Antics here taking their Echo, their Dock, their Bandit, and their Pulse. I really want to see Pulse try to play downstairs, even though it is very risky. I think it's very high reward, especially since from looking at the attacking operators with the Thermite, Capitao, Sledge, Blackbeard, they're going to try to do what they did before from the skylight with Capitao and, you know, fire mm -hmm. arrows off the doors and prevent the, uh, try to it's prevent the plant from going setup. down. So if... And they don't have a mirror this time either, so I wonder if they're going to reinforce both of those walls. Yeah, giving Thermite the go-ahead to kind of Thermite that wall and give them that opportunity, which is where Pulse will come in if they're playing it correctly. But it looks like he's going to use his C4 to make a rotate hole, which I think is going to actually potentially sealed around for the yeah. the defense here because unless bandit yeah no then they don't have any c4s to prevent that plant from going off and if the offense can get into position to attack the way that we're predicting they will then they're just going to easily win this round with capital sitting up in the skylight if this basic push works which a lot of the times it does i feel like this will win them the round yeah Now, Sledge just, or not Sledge, Thermite just droning in, letting Sledge know, hey, there is a Jaeger here. So, someone's going to have to come over here and get rid of the Jaeger device. Probably going to be Ash or Blackbeard so that he can get rid of that barbed wire without wasting too much utility. But it looks like Sledge is, is going to end up getting pre-fired by Pulse. He was probably pulsing him the entire time, and now Pulse is playing in this corner, which gives, which gives a little bit more freedom to him because he knows he can pulse at any time and say, okay, there's nobody on the window behind me. I can kind of play over here and be safe. Almost team killing Bandit, though. Luckily, he does not. And now Bandit and Pulse are going to be hiding in this room together, just like they have in the past few rounds. And what we've seen is a pretty common, normal thing. They can tell the push is coming from this way, and Thermite has dropped down and is going to you know, hit a little bit of barbed wire and get out of the way. But it looks like... Ash now has been taken down by Bandit, and Echo is just holding here waiting because they know that the offense is going to come through here. While Antics now, looks like they've gotten a little bit of their stuff together, and Doc is going to be playing in this corner now, trading out. With a P90. Out. Yeah, with a P90 ACOG. Unorthodox, but still effective. Now, is Capitao sitting up in the skylight? Yes, he is. This is just the typical Capitao's job here to make sure that they don't get, you know, some kind of run out. But I think that Pulse tried to stop... Uh, Thermite from getting the C4 or getting the Thermite off almost almost gets him but gets taken down in the process. Blackbeater just trying to peek, just trying to, you know, try to pick off somebody holding Cigar because Thermite and him have to push here if they want this plant to work because Capitao is just going to be sitting up top and now uh, Bandit ends up taking down uh, Thermite, tries to jump out on Blackbeard. Blackbeard luckily has a shield and does not get killed. And now he has to try to swing in. He's going to throw flashbangs. He knows there's someone in that corner. And all three of those flashbangs go in just the right spot. Can he pick off Doc? He sees Doc trying to crouch walking away. And now Capitao has come in. And they're going to try to push together like they did before. But I think that Antics is in position here to win this round. No problem. Because not only is Jaeger pre-firing here and takes down Blackbeard's other shield. They have the Echo Drone. And there's nothing to stop it. And they currently do not know where that Echo Drone is. The second shield gets taken out. He gets taken out by Jaeger. And now with Doc and Jaeger both all docked up and super, super powered, there's no way that Capital was ever going to push in and win that fight. So Antics now bringing this into overtime. The score is 4-4. Four, four. That, that was a little upset. Like, I was... I was I was really banking on the offense winning that round. But that Pulse getting that, that quick pick on Sledge right off the start... That just kind of, I would say, like, sealed the deal for him. Yeah, it they killed... Needed, they needed it, that it, sledge for that barbed wire. They needed him for the nades. Yeah, it killed It killed their push. They couldn't get rid of the barbed wire. Then they had one less guy on the windows trying to take control of Cigar, especially mm -hmm. when they didn't have a Mira. And I, what I also want to point out is that while while you can speculate that every every push 
on the from the offense, no matter what the situation is, is obviously most effective when all five mm -hmm. people are alive. But for that push in particular, it's so important to keep your all your each of your team members alive as long as possible because once it's a five man and that wall is open and the push gets started and you're, you know, going for the plant, if all five members of your team are up and Capital's up in the skylight, it should be the easiest round you've ever played. Especially with Pulse using that C4 right off the start. Yeah, you don't even have to worry <sighs> about Pulse downstairs or anything. Like, like, I mean, I know, like, the offense wouldn't know that, hey, Pulse used his C4 right away unless they had a drone on it, but that would have made the round so much smoother. Right, And exactly. if anything, if I was, say, I, like, if I was playing on the defensive side, I would have brought Rook instead of Doc and had Rook for the impact nade and, say, Pulse did end up having to use his C4, Rook could impact nade that one spot on the floor and still give Pulse a line of sight like up to where Thermite would use the plant. Exactly. And then they, they'd also have the rotate hole and the, the spot. And they would still so have the speak. C4. Yeah. So say exactly. Pulse could save it, kill the first person planting, and then like later on like use his Pulse just in case somebody snags the bomb, runs somebody like somewhere else. Right. But either way, they still they still did it pretty well. The Pulse played it pretty well by picking off Sledge. Exactly. <laughs> so, from here, I'm actually a little confused as to how we're supposed to proceed in an overtime. I don't know if it's... So, if it's 4-4... Four, four, yeah, because it I, go... it's just determining which who's on which side is what I'm most worried about, because I don't want to give anybody, you know, necessarily an unfair advantage, not to say there really is one, but, mm -hmm. you know, just in case... I'm not even sure as to like who would be on what side. Right. I'm thinking I'm thinking that we're just gonna let the teams the two teams will just decide if they wanna spawn in. Like if they if they join the lobby and wanna switch sides or whatever, they'll just have to figure it out amongst themselves. But it looks like Antics is comfortable taking the offense here. I don't it doesn't look like they're trying to switch or and I haven't gotten any kinds mm -hmm. of messages to say that to say different. So we will see how this proceeds once uh, Barbershop gets fully loaded in here. We're still waiting on two of their members. <clears throat> okay. Still waiting on one person to join. They figured out the offense defense conundrum that we were running into. Um, is there anything I, that is there anything that you're noticing that could improve from <clears throat> either side? Because I think they're both both sides are playing very well. They both definitely on this, know this map, map. On this map, you can definitely tell that Barbershop has more of a feel for it. Like on what was it, consulate, you could definitely tell that ant like the, the stress that antics had. Were just they were overwhelming. On right. this map, I th I feel like Barbershop has been better at, at like on defense. I would say they have been better at, say retaking a site. Like you could see like when they played downstairs, they let the person come in, they let them plant, and then everybody just swarmed back and they just took it over. But I would honestly want to see Barbershop play downstairs instead of playing upstairs. I feel like I personally feel like they played better downstairs. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. I think that this is kind of the moment in the game where, if they if they were to switch if they were to switch up their defense and pick a different location as opposed to picking the same one over and over and over again, I feel like these offense and defensive rounds have been kind of the same thing over and over mm -hmm. again. Both teams kind of running into each other head first. Yeah, like you have your capital, you have your glass. Like they are they are set up for a basic upstairs push. And it, say that defense, if they would have thrown it downstairs, that glass would have been, like, he would have been thrown for a loop, that Capital, like, he's not going to be up on the skylight. It's just, exactly. like, it's going to it's gonna throw him off a little bit. They have a Thermite instead of a Hibana. Like, you know, those yep. kinds of things are what <clears throat> can determine whether or not a team wins a round. And, but, but once again, we're going to see Barbershop holding upstairs and Antics attacking it. So we're going to see, you know... If anything changes, if anything's different, 
I would love to I would love for Antics to keep all of their members of their team alive like I was talking about for this push and see just and for everyone to just see how easy it is to push when you have everyone alive and you take control of Cigar effectively. It's still gonna be in. very hard with that mirror in that spot though. Like I feel like they would have they would almost have to push Mira out of that before they could even push into that spot. Oh definitely, but it looks like Mira has put a Mira in the bathroom this time as well, and has a rotate hole in the bathroom. So that that'll be oh, almost a team kill there on Jaeger. Um, I'd so, be interested to see like because that hatch, that hatch and back bar has never been open. I would almost like as an offensive person, person like push under and try to open that hatch, and then try like try to get a line of sight from Mira there. Because if you open that hatch, I don't I don't think she can run to that Christmas wall. Yeah, I don't. I don't think so either. Especially if they throw a grenade into the freezer, maybe because they're mm -hmm. you, you know there's that's usually always a guaranteed down because someone's on a camera somewhere or something like that. But it looks like the offense is getting right into it. Already opened the hatch and looking down the red staircase. Laz now repelling up to come help him. I think they're just waiting to get rid of the uh, to get rid of the Jaeger. Once again, like we were talking about, but it's going to be up to Ash, Thermite, or. Uh, Ash, Thermite, or Glads to use their smokes to get rid of it because Sledge does not want to waste his grenades. They're looking around again. Mute still being very effective, but not as effective as before. He, Laz sees where both of these defenders are playing and is going to go over to the window try to pick one of them off while Thermite opens the wall, pinning them down. Mute throwing a C4 out. Doesn't catch anybody, but now Mute has had to rotate back. A grenade coming down. Damages Mute slightly, and he retreats back into the kitchen. This push is coming very... Very, very uh, sporadically from the offense in a good way because they're coming in at a lot of different angles, a lot of different things are happening, and it's forcing the defenders to adapt as quickly as they can while still pinning them down, which is what the offense needs to happen. The offense needs the defenders to stay pinned down and know where they are so they can pre-fire them or throw grenades at them. Looks like Capital will take down Jaeger. Capital pushes in and gets killed by Mute. Traded out immediately. Still a good push from Capital, and it's up to the offense now to continue this push. They're droning him out. They know where he is. They just saw him in the corner. Sledge is going to throw a grenade, just like I was talking about. And the grenade coming out doesn't catch him. They don't know exactly where he is. He's going to try to throw another grenade, maybe. No, Mute retreats back. He's now behind the mirror in the bathroom in a very safe location. C4 coming in from underneath from Valkyrie. Doesn't catch anybody. Ash is now sitting up in the skylight, just trying to see if anybody rotates in and out of the freezer. Looks like Glaz sees Mira there for just a second, but doesn't have the angle to catch her. And now Mira has opened the hatch up and has dropped down. Glaz knows that that's happened, and now he's waiting here looking at the white hallway. However, it looks like Sledge has come in and killed Rook in the freezer. They're inside now, and now all they need is for uh, Thermite to come in and plant. But it looks like Mute takes him down. Mute also taking down Ash, and now Thermite has to try to come in and plant. But Mira is down, and it is all up to Glaz and Thermite to plant this bomb, and Mute is all by himself. Takes down, takes down Glaz, and now it's all up to Thermite, who's in a 2v1 scenario. I would love to see... That just took a turn of events so yeah, quickly. I, personally, I would love to see Thermite run outside and get in the skylight, but I don't think that he is even thinking about that. I think he's a little bit too nervous to move. Thermite, however, is trying to hold an angle here. Just trying to listen here for the plant. Mute coming in all sneaky-like. If Thermite has a drone on it, he'll know that he's here. I think pretends to go for the plant. Ends up getting pre-fired and takes down Thermite right there. And that will that be... That Mute just clutched that entire... Did he get... Was that an ace? That mute to get an ace? I don't know if that was an ace. I think it was four. I think it was a four piece. Okay, okay. Either way, that for mute and that MP5K with how yeah, weak that gun mute. is, mute did very, very well. Oh yeah, mute. Mute was great there. Mute, mute uh, played mute a role not only preventing round. drones, but definitely in the killing of all those players and the way he played that. Very intelligent, getting the revive up on his teammate after he knew that. That, that uh, glass he had taken down on glass. A. Mm -hmm. I'm, with Glaz being as powerful as he is, I'm kind of kind of upset that Glaz didn't kill Mute. But either way, that Mute was just like he he single handedly won them that round. Exactly. Very nice plays coming out from Barbershop as a whole, and that push from Antics was great. They got in there, and you know we're seeing a very dynamic game as opposed to a very static one. And you never know, like you know that nade that came out that got thrown behind the couch instead of into the corner. 
That could have that could have killed Mute right then, and we were even talking about that static defenders mm -hmm. having to get pinned down into certain areas where you can predict where they're going to be, and it just unfortunately that grenade got thrown to the wrong spot because he could have only been in, he could have only been in one of two. That was just very interesting. That was kind of mind blowing, especially Mute just sitting behind that couch. Like if and Glass were to get on, I don't I don't remember, like I don't know what direction. Those windows West, are, but like those West, those two yeah, windows on the, like on that one side, you could have easily picked off mute. But it's just I it's, guess it's just the yeah, it's just it's just thing. the way it goes. There's been lots of people yeah. getting killed on windows, you know, like by pulse and other things. So it's you know it's not uncommon to believe that you know you never know where you're gonna get killed from anymore, especially when we've had like a couple runouts on that side of the map. Like it's just mm -hmm. very volatile, and it kind of changes the way certain people play because. They're, they get nervous and they don't know who, where they're going to come from. Now Fuse coming over here to the east wall. Going to look around, going to make sure this door is closed. I think might be just be holding an angle for right now while they drone it out and they try to make sure that he's not going to get run out on because that would be a huge play from the defense to kind of give them a, a big advantage. Jaeger taking a little bit of damage, not for sure from where, but Doc will heal him up real fast. And Echo looks like he'll be playing in the freezer, which is a, g a good spot for Echo. He, you know, can can watch a lot of a, a lot of the B bomb from here. Can help out with the drops, and also can can move the Echo drone around in ways so that they can you know, prevent the plant from going as long down. As he keeps that Echo drone up. He's good. Exactly. Now it looks like Jaeger is going to open this reading room door and scare the attackers off the east wall which I do think is a good play. It definitely throws them off, because now Fuse is struggling to figure out where can I place my Fuse charges? Where can I actually use my utility? And he has he doesn't have a place to do it. Both of these windows now are open, I believe. Well, at least one of them is. It looks like Fuse is gonna go for the Fuse, but I think Doc is waiting and will pre-fire it directly off, almost taking Fuse's head off, but doesn't quite catch him. Very, very close, but Doc is still in the white hallway. Rotates across, almost gets killed by Fuse, but Fuse can't quite land the shots. Now, the offense has to figure out a way to attack here. They're kind of very sporadic. They don't quite know where to go because they don't have a Thermite or a Hibana, which is pigeonholing them into this kind of play on the windows, play for picks, play style, which, is, which worked because they just got Doc, but it can't work forever because all it takes is for the defenders to sit back and wait for them to come inside and pick them off where they can't get shot from. Now it looks to me like Sledge is going in, will get echoed immediately as he comes in, and he also goes for the plant. I think that Pulse might have gone for a C4 from underneath, but didn't quite get it, but Pulse does come upstairs and pick, take down the diffuser. Now Fuse knows he's over here, but has no way to get him out, and it looks like Pulse is just going to sit in this corner and wait out the round, while Echo is doing a fantastic job, because Ash is now echoed in the hallway and doesn't know where to go. Looking at, her, looking at her, trying to figure out where to go, but the Echo Drone is getting worse and worse, and she is easily taken down by Jaeger on the staircase. It is now all up to Fuse. He has to try to come in, but Jaeger jumps out on him. And now Jaeger is outside while Thermite, or Thatcher and Blackbeard are dropping down. If Thatcher can pick up the bomb, he might be able to plant just in time. But Echo has to be waiting. There's no way the Echo Drone isn't waiting for him, and Echo yep, will come in is. clutch once again bringing it into the final round of this overtime uh, game between Antics and uh, Barbershop. And we are going to see Barbershop go downstairs. I I personally like watching them watch them defend this. I feel like they did very well last time. Oh, last time they, they absolutely picked off Antics one mm -hmm. by one from like three or four different angles all at the same time. It was very nice defense. And even though Antics, when they pushed it, they had a great they had a great push going for them themselves. It's not like, you know, it's not it's not like they weren't like paying attention. They just it was just their attack wasn't as good as the defense had, you know? So, judging off of these this operator selection from the defense, mm -hmm. I'd imagine that they're that they're anticipating a very heavy uh Fireplace hold again. They they brought Castle. They brought Mira. They brought Doc, and they brought Rook. Rook. And Doc. Yeah, three, three armors. Yeah, they're they're gonna they're gonna plan. Their plan is obviously going to be 
sitting in at angles, trying to just watch the common angles that everyone knows are played, and just try to win the round from basically from positioning instead of uh, from be having a dynamic defense. But this could work in the offense's favor because they have a fuse. So mm -hmm. if the offense can attack and get into Cigar without any hitches, because there's only one C4. It's almost watch. impossible to get away yeah. from a fuse with a free armor. Exactly. Once you hear that fuse above you, you know it's it's over. It, it, the only thing that could happen is maybe they get lucky and they get downed and then Doc is somewhere to heal them real quick so they can get away in time. But if Fuse positions his fuse charges properly, it, he... <clears throat> He should be able to pick up a couple easy kills. Now, Jaeger playing underneath the skylight in a very risky position. Is he going to get droned out? And he will immediately. Now they know he's here. If Jaeger does not move, he will get killed as soon as he moves out of this area. He has to get out of here. They're just waiting on that. They're just waiting, holding an angle. I'm surprised he didn't get shot right there somehow. You not see him from that angle? I, I guess oh, not. I guess Who not. is that? Is that Thermite? Yeah, like, I guess you can't see him from that angle, but it's still very, very... Yep, and there we go. That's That's... Jaeger getting downed by Hibana coming in from a different angle to shoot him from. Easy pre-fire for her, most likely. Now Thermite droning out, just looking around, trying to figure out exactly if, if reading room's clear. They see Rook playing on the staircase, kind of playing a little uh, out of position, and he immediately goes back and is a little nervous now. Doesn't know if there's someone pushing behind this drone, but he does go into reading room, and Thermite is calling him out, and the shots from above coming down from Ash from the, from the hatch end up taking him down. But it looks like, and now a fuse going off as well. And it, it looks like this offensive push coming out of Antics is just exactly what they needed. But I think that Doc took down Blackbeard. That will be leaving a little bit of pressure somewhere, but the flashes are going to come down, and this drop is going to come down as well. They're just going to drop in and go for, the, go for the attack. Dropping into some already destroyed barbed wire takes down Doc immediately because they knew that the castle was closed. Mira now playing in the corner and they're going to use their her own Mira against her. They have to know that she's there now, but I think that Thermite is going to go for the plant and Ash ends up coming in and taking down Mira at the end there. Great game coming out of both these teams. It looks like Antics will win this game, or this match, excuse me, two maps to zero. That was very well pushed because last time I believe Antics focused more on a Red Stairs push, and this time I feel like they all just flooded the hatch, and I do not believe that like anybody on the defense was ready for that. Like you could tell, Doc was still just sitting behind the bomb. You had an angle that was looking down the hallway at that A bomb, and then once everybody just dropped that hatch, he was instantly screwed because nobody was there to back him up. Exactly, and not only that, I think that the defenders got caught off, caught a little off guard because. They saw that how they pushed it last time up the red stairs, and Jaeger mm -hmm. thought that maybe he could sit in a weird ang at a weird spot that not everyone sits in. But it seemed like Antics went back to the roots of the game and really just decided, hey, let's just push this standard. We're going to take a Fuse. We're going to take a Hibana and a Thermite just in case. Sledge, Ash, and just push in and take control of everything we're supposed to take control of to make the push most effective. And they just took like, their time at that and point. And like I under I understand like the roaming. I understand roaming when it's but like it's the score is five five. It's also smart to play a little more on the safe side because say your Jaeger bit gets picked off in the first thirty seconds like he did, you're instantly down a man. It, it, like it's an instant advantage for like the offensive team. Especially Jaeger being the only <clears throat> operator the only that, three could, speed. that could yeah the only three speed who could actually go for flanks played I think a big role in in the attack going so successfully with him getting picked off early because they didn't they knew that they didn't have to worry about their mm -hmm. flanks at that point. But um at this point guys, where we have uh, our second match coming up shortly, it's going to be um off brand versus I think the name of the team is Final what was it? Final Concept. Off brand versus Final Concept coming up in 20 minutes. We are going to change channels. We're going to switch over to my channel, and that is oh. <clears throat> uh, twitch.tv slash runaroundman123. If you guys want to watch that game, please tune in. And thank you for watching on the R6 TV League channel. If anybody hasn't hit the follow button yet, please follow. This league has been put here for everyone's benefit on Xbox. So anybody that plays Xbox and wants to continue seeing things like this, from the Xbox perspective, 
should follow and support the channel. And uh, we will be right back in about 20.